okay we are going to discuss parity checking two dimensional bit parity okay so <coughs> let's discuss it how it works okay so first suppose that uh, we have this data bits okay so that these data bits they are arranged in rows and columns for example we have these data bits they are for example first five bits they are put in the first row the second five bits they are put as the second row and the third five bits they are put as the third row okay then for each row we compute even parity for example in the first row the number of ones are odd so the parity bit will be one so that the total number of ones become even in the second row the number of ones are already even so this parity bit it will be set to zero second in the third row also the number of ones are odd so the value will be put to one the bit parity will be one such that total number of ones become even now we have computed the parity single parity bit for each row then we compute the single bit parity for each column as well for example in the first column the number of ones are even so the parity will be zero in the second column the number of ones are even so it will be zero in the third it is odd so it will be one such that the total number of ones becomes the even similarly for this column and this column okay so this is how the even parity bits are computed for each row and each column okay now what is the advantage the advantage of this two dimensional bit parity is that that it can detect and correct the single bit error okay so suppose that if the single bit is changed for example here you can see in this data bit this bit is 1 now it is changed to 0 if it is changed to 0 and we want to compute the parity bit okay so <coughs> when this bit, bit parity i is computed so the data and this bit parity they will be transmitted along with the data this data and this row bit parity and the column bit parity they both will be transmitted to the receiver okay so when the receiver receives the data so it will arrange the this data into rows and columns and the bit parity values that are sent from the sender they will be set here they will be put here okay then the receiver checks that whether there is error or not you can see that in the first row the number of ones are one the number of ones are even so it means that it is okay but in the second row you can see that the number of ones are odd so it means that this error this row has error this row has error because here the number of ones are odd okay so we put in uh, a line on this row that this row it has error and the third row it doesn't have error why because the number of ones are even in the first column the number of ones are even so it is error free in the second column the number of ones are odd there is one one so it means that there is error so we put a line here okay in the third column the number of ones are uh, even and the fourth the number of ones are even and here the number of ones are even here the number of ones are even so it means that there is no error so only so this row has error and this column has error so we put the line so where the line is crossed here they intersect with each other so it means that this better is has error so the bit where the rows and column intersect where the wrong row and the wrong column they intersect that bit has error so if that bit has error so the bit has either value 0 or 1 so here if the value is 0 and this is error so it means that it should be 1 so it is set to 1 so this is the advantage of two dimensional bit parity that if single bit is changed then then this can detect that where is the error so it detects that this bit is error where so by putting the line on the wrong row and on the wrong column 
and the when the wrong row and wrong column they intersect so that bit is an error if that value is zero then put it to one so you can see that that it can not only detect that where is the error but it can also correct the error so this is the advantage of two bit parity checking but what is its disadvantage its disadvantage is that that you can see that in single bit parity we were saying we were sending only one bit extra this bit parity it was extra okay but here but in the two dimensional bit parity you can see that how many bits are sent extra one two three four five six seven eight nine so nine bits are sent extra so this is overhead but these nine bits they are sent extra but they have an advantage what is the advantage that it can detect the single bit parity that where is the error it can detect the bit error it can identify that which bit has error and it can also correct that so this is called forward error recovery okay so this is the advantage that in the two dimensional bit parity that we can detect single bit error and we can also correct it okay similarly we have discussed internet checksum okay that we have discussed it is used internet checksum it is used for error recovery for bit errors okay so how, how it works first of all suppose this is the data so we treat the sender it treat the segment contained as sequence of 16 bit integers so suppose this is the data so we we took 16 bit for example this first 16 bits okay so they are put so the first 16 bit they are put as a first row and the next 16 bit they are put as a second row okay so the sender it reads the segment contained a sequence of 16 bit integer so you can see that this these were the data bits so first 16 bits they are put as a first row the second 16 bits they are put as a second row then we perform addition these bits are added if these are added so you can see that if these bits are added okay uh, by using uh, uh, you, you, you can see that we are using exclusive uh, uh, so it is uh, basically uh, 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 it is basically uh, one okay so when these are values are added so this is for example their sum okay so you can see that here is a carry okay so when there is a carry so we put that carry uh, bit we also add that carry to the this one okay if it is added with this one okay so what we uh, we will get so these are the values so this is become the sum when the sum of the 16 bit integer is computed then this sum we took the ones complement we took its ones complement so the ones complement of this sum it will become like this way okay so this is the checksum so this data along with this checksum it will be sent to the receiver it will be sent to the receiver and this checksum mechanism is used in udp and tcp and ip okay so we have already discussed it so this data and the checksum they both will be transmitted by the sender okay so <laughs> suppose that this is the uh, these are the 16 bit values okay two rows so these 16 bit data they are added so their sum is computed and then we took the ones complement of the values and it becomes the checksum okay so this checksum and these data bits they will be sent to the res receiver so when the receiver receives suppose the receiver receives this data bits and this checksum so it recomputes the checksum for the data bit for this data bit the receiver recompute the checksum so suppose this is the checksum so after the computing the checksum for this data bits then the user compare the this this checksum with the checksum that were sent by the sender 
that was sent by the sender so if these two are equal so it means that there is no error and if there is uh, if they are computed and they have error then it means that the data has bit error so the receiver it computes the checksum for receive segment so when the receiver receives the data and the checksum so the receiver recomputes the checksum for the received data and then check if computed checksum is equal to the checksum value that was sent by the sender so if they are equal so it means there is no error if they are not equal then there is error okay so now another method that we are using uh, it is called cyclic re uh, uh, redundancy check it is very very important it is more powerful error detection code okay so in crc we view the data bits as a d okay suppose this is the data bits 10110 okay then we choose r plus 1 bits this is called generator rg it is known for example we selected 1 001 so it means that its goal the crc goal is that if there if we select r plus 1 bit as g for example we selected 4 so this the crc it computes the r such that d by r is exactly divisible by g modulus 2 okay and modulus 2 so how it does works for example For example, this is the data bits. This data bit, it is divided by g. D by r, okay. They are divided by modulus two. So this is the its division. So this is the r. This r is computed, okay. So in the CRC cyclic redundancy check, we view the data bits d as binary number. For example, this is the data. we select r plus 1 bit pattern which is called g generator for example we select this then we choose r crc bits we choose r crc bits how many if we select g r plus 1 here in the case is 4 so we will compute 3 r becomes 3 so we will compute the 3 r bits such that d by r exactly divided by g in in i think in simple words the d and g they are divided by using modulus 2 for example this division and the remainder bits this r these are the remainder bits r so this is the code this is the code so we send this data bits and this r bits okay so the sender divide d by g using modulus 2 okay and it computes the remainder bits so these remainder bits they are called r they will be always r bits they will be small r bits if the g is r plus 1 that is g is 4 bits then the r it will be 3 bits okay so this data bits and this r bits they will be sent to the receiver because the receiver and sender they should know the g in advance in advance they will know about the g okay this value it will be known to both sender and receiver okay so these are pre uh, in advance they are known this g value this 1 1001 they are known to sender and receiver okay and this division method is also known so only when the sender sends the this data so the sender using the sender divides this data by g like this way using modulus 2 and when it it computes the r these bits so this this becomes the error detection code so this r bits they are sent along with the data okay so this d bits and the r this r bits that that they that are remainder bits they both they will be sent to the receiver so when the receiver receives this data bits and the r bits it already knows the g so it it divides this d and r both d and r they are, uh, they are divided by g using modulus 2 okay so if they are divided exactly that is the remainder is zero 
so it means that this error is this bits are errorful if the remainder is not zero if none zero remainder then error is detected but if the remainder is zero then there is no error there is no bit error okay so this crc it is complex however but its advantage is that that it can detect all burst error less than r plus one less than r plus one that is if r is here it detected three and r plus one is four so it means that less than three like one bit two bit up to three bit that are changed consecutively then it can detect it that these bits are okay it can detect the error okay so this is its advantage so here but it is computationally expensive because it is involving a division and it is used widely in ethernet and wi-fi and atm why because these make layer protocol they are implemented in hardware and they are faster so therefore they are hard implemented in hardware they are faster so therefore it can be used this they use the crc but the udp the the tcp and ip they were using the checksum method okay so i think we have discussed the error detection scheme in detail now we are going to discuss that how error detection works you can see that we have discussed these methods uh, crc internet uh, checksum and single period bit preparatory so in all these schemes you can see that what is common how it works so from general point of view the in any any error detection scheme we have datagram for the data bits we compute the code error detection code in the single bit parity this error detection code was one bit in two dimensional parity bit it was number of rows and number of columns in the checksum there were 16 bit and the crc there were r bits three bits remainder okay for example here in the crc this three bits they were the they were the error detection code they were extra bits they were extra bits okay so then the data along with error detection code they are sent to the receiver the receiver again computes the error detection code for the received data and it compares if there is where whether there is error or there is not error if there is an error and if it is corrected then it corrects that error and then the data is given to the upper layer if there if there is error and the error is detected but the error cannot be corrected then the packet is lost if there is error and the error is detected okay so the packet will be lost okay so error detection and correction bits these are called redundant bits redundancy so we use redundant extra bits okay in the single bit parity it was one bit in the two dimension it was number of row and number of columns equal to and the checksum it was 16 bits and the crc it was three bits r bits so error detection is not 100 percent reliable okay so therefore sometime protocol may miss some errors but it is ready okay so large edc field so if as we know that uh, in the in the crc what is its advantage that it can detect less than r plus one bits if for example if three if zero one two three up to three bits they are changed then it can detect this but what is its disadvantage the disadvantage is that we are sending here three extra bits and we are doing this computationally extensive process and the checksum it is 16 bits extra bits are sent and the two dimensional bit how many the number of rows and the number of columns they are sent extra bits you can see that by using two dimensional bit parity it is good that it can detect a single bit error and it can correct it but here we are sending how many bits one two three four five six seven eight nine nine bits are sent extra okay so if the more number of redundant bits are sent extra they are good that it can detect and it can correct the errors but the problem is that, that we are sending extra bits okay so we have discussed the uh, uh, error detection schemes then we will uh, uh, in the next class we would like to discuss the multiple access protocols okay